Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our Waves of Change box. Now this box came out in June and so in celebration of June we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for you which means you guys get to choose who it goes to and it falls right in line with Father's Day. Perfect. Yeah, so um, we know that not um, everybody may have a father to send this to. Um, which I understand. And in that case, um, send it to someone in your life who you appreciate, who means something to you. Or maybe you just take this time to think about this project and think about this person that's no longer with you. Just think about them for an hour. I and like that. memories and memories. And it can be a reminder for you of the relationship that you had with this person and what they meant to you. Okay? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are essentially going to do a play on our Northern Lights project. Sweet. Okay, so let me actually get that reference photo out so you guys know what I'm talking about. There's this guy. Now, Keenan. Yeah. If you want, I can do that S curve or we can do one where it maybe starts in the middle and like kind of splays out. Like what do a you K. Think? <laughs> Not like a K. Well, I don't know if I can make the I K. misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the S-curve. Should we do it again? Yeah, do it again. All right. Now, remember, as I said in this tutorial, um, there are so many different opportunities with this project, and you can go a million different ways. And it was actually so cute because I was talking to um, one of our coworkers. It was either Mary or Heidi, but we were talking about this for, like, Father's Day and cards and stuff like that. And they were like, yeah, you can just say, like, I look up to you. And it's a sky painting. Oh, that's Isn't that right. cute? That's so nice. Dang. Just a thought. Okay. So I'm using the colors out of our um, Waves of Change box. We got emerald green, berry blue, azure blue, Payne's gray, and bleed proof white. I'm going to be using a 2 6 and a 12. I don't think I'll need the one wash, but I'll just have it handy just in case. And. Let's go for it. All so, right. I'm going to take this. Oh, and if you guys have like purple, maybe you could do a purple Northern Lights instead of green. Oh, that, that would, would be, be cool. Pretty. That's what I would do if I was making this for my husband because that's his favorite color. Uh huh. Okay, so I'm going to start with my one. Well, you can do a one or a 12 or a six, whatever you have. Wet the entire postcard with just water, okay? And then working quickly, take your brush, grab some emerald green, and we're going to make an S. And let it get whiter along the top. Mm. And I'm just going to do one more boop. But that's it, because I learned from teaching that I want to keep it simple. OK, now I'm going to mix all three colors to get my night sky color. And while it's still wet like this, I'm using my six and immediately going in and putting in this dark value. Sarah. Yeah. Have you ever heard the acronym KISS, K-I-S-S? -S, yes. For keeping things simple. Yes. You know how normally it goes, keep it simple, stupid? Yeah. You could say, keep it simple, Sarah. <gasps> Boom. Boom. Keenan, love it. Thank doing you. it. Perfect. Great. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure that my sky gets a little bit lighter at the bottom here. So I'm using a lighter value. And then I'm going to take my one inch wash and let's try and swoop it. We're going to do the same thing over here. So we kind of get that like swoopy swirl in our sky. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I'm gonna just, I don't like how that's just a white chunk. So I'm just gonna, there we go. Okay, now we let it dry. I'm going to do the stars in one layer this time, so I'm just going to let this dry. 
Okay, now that it's dry, I'm gonna do my trees. So I'm gonna use just Payne's Gray here. And I'm gonna switch to my two to do my trunks just because this is a smaller card, so I want to kind of like shrink things down, do thinner lines. And I'm gonna do my tree trunks coming up, slightly angled. I'm gonna have these go a little bit taller than my project. Okay. Sarah, question. Yes. In the tutorial, you mentioned along the lines of trees or beasts. Yeah. Is there, for those who are like, oh snap, more trees, mm -hmm. that don't feel like practicing more trees, okay. what could we put there instead? Ooh, good question. First, you have to answer it. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to answer my question with another question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to form it. I'm trying to think. I, I would almost always go to doing some type of mountain. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, good. Yes. That's what I was thinking because that covers a lot of space. Yep. But you can just use it as a dark silhouette. And I'm trying to think of like, what would you see if you were actually out looking at the Northern Lights? What would you? What would your surroundings be? In all the movies I've seen with the Northern Lights, yeah, it's either direct shots into space, or so the nothing. Okay. Or they're on a cliff, and so oh, and okay. So like not necessarily like a dangerous cliff, just like a, a dropping. So they don't. They would just see a valley. So if we're looking up, we lose the valley, and we just see like on the edge two or three trees. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. I could think of, you could do mountains. You can do a silhouette of a, of a mountain with a tent. Maybe there's a lake, a reflective that lake. That would be sweet. Like what if you combine the moonlight, you know that moonlight project? Yes. Or with the, can the tent on the side? No, no, no. It's just the moon on the water waves. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it kind of reflects. Yep. Like you could essentially put your horizon line here and do a little silhouette mountains and then have the northern lights reflect uh -huh. in the water. I like that. That one. That would be sweet. That would be really cool. You could do, you could even just have it be the sky, right? Just as if you're laying flat looking up and there's no nothing else. Nothing, right. So That's more star, a little darker on the bottom and more stars. Yeah. I was laughing because uh, I asked how we could make it simpler, and they were like, what if we <laughs> add a reflective surface? What if you double <laughs> the amount of work involved? We're going to need a bigger piece of paper. Now, I go over different trees pretty much in, in pretty good detail, I would say, with this actual project tutorial. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not going too crazy with my directions right now, because um, I feel like I've given you some, I, d I just don't want it to seem so repetitive. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing, remember to have different brush strokes and sizes. They're gonna get bigger as they go on the bottom. Remember to have a, try for the most part, have an overall triangle shape with your trees and let them, let there be variation. Let some be really dense. Let some be sparse. Let some be tall. Let some be short. There is variation in nature and almost anything we can imagine, I'm sure it exists somewhere. A tree that gets all wonky, one that has like a crazy branch that's broken off because it was hit by lightning. Like, Ooh, I love that idea. A tree broken in half. I've seen that too. Yeah. Like 10, 15 feet up, it just snapped in half, still attached to itself, just leaning in a, into another tree. Cool. Looks cool. Okay, and I'm gonna go for a six on the bottom half of these trees. Cause I just want bigger brush strokes. And then you could even just take the paint that's already there and keep going with your two. And remember the little more detail strokes are along the edge in the middle along the trunk 
or where a bunch of branches overlap, that's where you're going to have thicker like areas because it's dense because they're overlapping. I feel like this one needs to be thicker. So I'm just gonna make this one wider. And it's so funny, I've started to really pay attention to the, I have a ton of trees in, um, on my like yard, my property. And I'm always, I, I've been kind of paying attention to them a lot more. And it's so funny because sometimes the shape of them, I would be like, I would actually not <laughs> paint that shape. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Because I would think like, oh, that's too squatty or like that's way wide, or like there's a broken off section here so it seems uneven. It's actually kind of funny how Isn't like, um, I just wouldn't, if I were to paint a tree that looked exactly like that, I would think that I did something wrong. Right. You know, it's just kind of funny. It's like, an, it's not a natural thought process to create a messed up looking tree, but then you look at the messed up looking trees, you're like, dang, that is a cool tree. That is a messed up cool tree. Need to paint that. I, I got to paint it. And I'm just taking my one and just kind of doing like rough textures. This is a larger brush, so I'm getting some funky stuff, but I'm embracing it, okay? We're saying it's okay for our trees to be funky. Let's just see what happens. I'm just full on painting this tree with this brush and I actually really like what's happening here. That's cool. That's probably my favorite side of the painting. Yeah? Yep, because of that tree. Okay, I feel like I need another tree here. And I'm gonna paint, let's try it. So I'm gonna use my one inch wash and using mostly the corner, I'm gonna do up angled brush strokes and then some dots and dashes that thin out. And let's just kind of like see what kind of marks we can get. Uh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> uh, that totally looks like a tree. <laughs> 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 but I am going to do a couple detailed right there. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. Nice. I love how that turned out, actually. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a great tree. <laughs> okay, but I will say that I do have a sparse tree here and no sparse trees here, and that's kind of bothering me. That feels like it's sticking out like a sore thumb. So I'm gonna do a sparse tree right here. Cool. There we go. That feels better. All right. Should we do our stars? Stars. Stars. Gosh, this one is coming together quickly, isn't it? It is. I'm kind of loving it. I feel like there's a stars song that should be sung. Like Twinkle Twinkle? Twinkle Twinkle. No, I don't love that song. Okay, so I'm grabbing some bleed proof white. Remember if your bleed proof white is a little bit crusty, just do a couple droplet, droplets of clean water in there and stir it up and it will reconstitute. And I like to do a couple test flicks to see how big these drops are gonna be. And usually the first couple hits off your paintbrush are where you're gonna get the biggest droplets. So you can kind of like not worry about getting them too big and then move on to your painting and move anything that is expensive like computers or phones and splatter. Sarah, in the tutorial, you covered the trees. Yeah. I noticed that you did not do that today. I did not do that today because I feel like my sky on this is only like a two by four section. Mm. So it was a little bit easier for me to avoid because I'm just doing like Yep, makes sense, okay. But. I did get a couple splatters, but I don't think enough 
where that to other notice. one, since it was so big and I was splattering a lot, yes. I didn't feel like I have as, had as much control. But if you want to block it off, go ahead and block it off. And then we got to do our couple like pointed stars. So just kind of letting there be variation within the stars itself. Depending on the time of year, this could be Saturn that you're seeing actually. Ooh. Maybe one is a... If you have red paint, you can tint your blue proof white and put a dot and it could be Mars. Ooh, that would be cool. My uh, husband, Michael, is into astronomy and he has a cool telescope. And so, um, like a big one. It's yeah, it's huge. amazing. It's like as big as I am. Yep. And we have been able to look at planets and even like, and <laughs> I, I don't even know the language to other say correctly. Other aspects of space. Other aspects of space where there are hints of colors, <laughs> like groupings of stars. And there are, there's like pink tints. Cool. There's red tints and green. And you can see it and it's beautiful. So... Yeah, absolutely. You can add that to your painting. Cool. Okay, should we take off the tape? Yes. The reveal is always good, right? Especially for this one. Now, I want to say that I use my one inch wash to kind of smooth this line, but you can just let it have like hard edges and be blooms and that would be really cool too i love painting the sky especially the night sky because you have so much freedom in the texture of that sky because people are going to look at that and be like sky and so if you have some really cool bloom some really cool transitions some really cool hard edges people aren't going to be like i can't tell what that is mm -hmm. they absolutely still will be able to tell where it is and whenever i have that freedom I allow myself to play more. Yes. And you can claim it as your own galaxy that you created. Yeah. Boom. Okay, cool. Gosh, this is beautiful. Yes, it is. And hopefully you got some fun ideas for me and Keenan of maybe if you're just so tired of painting trees, <laughs> you can do a different silhouette or even a totally different project. This is your postcard. Now, if you're worried about sending postcards in the mail, like them getting wet, we do sell a wax that is perfect for sealing your paintings. That's called Dorland's Wax. Basically what you do is after your painting is dry, you take a clean cloth or a paper towel, I used a paper towel, and just do a thin rubbing layer of the wax on top and you let it dry and then from there on it's waterproof. Sweet. I've literally sprayed water on one of my paintings after I did it, I was terrified. <laughs> I was like, but I gotta test if this works and it totally works great. So if you're looking for a way to seal your postcard paintings, um, you can just get Dorland's wax to do that and it works awesome. It's a wonderful product. So. Um, I hope that you take the time to paint this and send it to your father or a male figure in your life that matters to you, or at least you paint it for you in memory of that person and the relationship that you've had. Um, if you can think of a, uh, someone who maybe needs postcards, ne needs a little bit of an art hug, um, we do have a nomination form on our website where you can go and take a look and nominate someone. Um, the whole point of this is to show that art has the power um, to show love, to show kindness, and to show someone that you're thinking about them. And I think that if we prioritize that, if we prioritize in our day letting people know that we care about them in the same way that we prioritize checking social media. Yes getting all of our work done on time, um, showing up, then I think the world would just be a kinder place. And I think that we can all use a little bit of a kinder place to be at. So I appreciate you guys for being here, for painting this with me. And um, I'll see you guys next time.